Now, before we get into the details of DxO Photo Lab, I think the best thing to do to demonstrate the vast advantage you have when doing high volume work, especially shooting raw, is to just demonstrate for you what happens when you load DxO. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to click on Photo Lab, and when it opens, I think it'll be glaringly obvious to you uh, the incredible advantage you have when using DxO in high volume applications. And if you look to the left, you see this is a mirror image of my directory structure within Finder on a Mac. And I think you'll find if you're on a Windows machine, you'll see the same thing with Windows Explorer. DxO simply accesses your native directory structure. It goes to the last directory that you had open, which had 333 images in it. You immediately see the thumbnails. You can scroll through and easily scan the thumbnails and let's say I like this one and I like this one which I'm going to combine into one image because I have the exposure for the foreground here and the sky here then I'll come over make sure that I am organizing things according to file name hit five stars or three or four or two or one or whatever number of stars you want to give it uh, and then just keep going now here's one. I think I've done this before, so I've got some that are chosen. Now, once you scroll through and choose all your images, you simply organize according to rank. You click this, and then everything is grouped together. At this point, the best thing to do is to choose the ones you want, do color corrections. In other words, everything is grouped in one place, I guess is the best way to put it, so that if you want to go through and do any corrections to each individual image, they're a lot easier to find than having to scroll through your entire shoot, 330 images. If I want to look at another directory of images, let's go to March 4th of 2017. This is a basketball game. 700 images, boom, load instantly. I can scroll through and I can look and tell which images I want to take a second look at. I then, in the same manner, give them one through five stars, group according to rank, and then when I go all the way down here, and I haven't gone through this list of basketball images yet, so I haven't chosen any. And there's some good shots in here too, by the way, but just so you know, like right here, this is a great shot right there. That's the one you want. And so what you do is you go through and you make your corrections under the custom tab, and it's so easy. And you can get through, literally, I can go through this entire group of 700 images, cull, rank, adjust, crop, and export as a 16-bit TIFF in less than an hour, literally. And you can't do that with any other program. You can't do that with Adobe Camera Raw because there is no directory function within Adobe Camera Raw. You have to manually load whatever images you want to adjust into it. Same thing with Luminar, same thing with On1, same thing with Lightroom. All these programs force you. Capture One is especially cumbersome to deal with. You've got to establish a catalog. You've got to then import a bunch of images. Then you've got to choose the ones you want to work on. And it just adds frustration and it adds time to your workload that you really don't need. And nobody needs it. So use DxO. Now, Let's look at the downside to DxO, and I don't think it's much of a downside, at least not in, in the kind of work that I do. If I wanted to white balance this shot, let's just show you what I would do. I would find a gray area on the image or a white or a black area on the image and click on it to see if it improves it. Uh, what I'm looking at is a slight green tint to the African-American players, and that's something you'll get quite a bit. So I didn't see much of an adjustment when I clicked on the gray uniform. And then let's get the referee. He's got black and white. So let's click on that. And it warms it up just a little bit. Let's get the pants, which I know are black. Okay, and I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So the shirt looks like it's going to give me a warmer result than really what I'm looking for. But if I click on the gray, and then I can come in and adjust that green out of there. And then I can increase the exposure slightly. 
the little bitty color adjustments that I need to do on an image are very, very easy to do and are contained within DxO. So I don't do a lot of color adjustment. Most of it is white balance oriented. So I don't miss the sophisticated color adjustments that uh, DxO does not come with. However, having said that, I can then come down and adjust the shadows. There's a special effect called clear view, which is meant to get rid of haze in a landscape shot, contrast, vibrancy and saturation. Here's my noise reduction. All of the things I need to do to this image on a global basis are right here and very, very easy to use, very intuitive and doesn't take uh, rocket science to figure out. I got a nice clear view of the histogram. So that's what DxO's advantage is is how efficiently you can work with high volume images. In the next movie, let's take a look at the specifics of DxO and how you can use it to streamline your high volume workflow.